welcome to today's somewhat foreshortened um, live demo session. We've got two entries. Um, the first is Thomas Lange, Mr. Fai. Okay, thank you, Manetti. So I want to show you today the Fai CD, the, the different things a Fai CD can do. First, this is the web page. Uh, Fai is a fully automatic installation. And as you see, you can just download an either image there, or if you go to the Phi CD submenu, there are several flavors. Yes, what? Zoom in. Zoom in. Oh, zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you see, there are different flavors of the CD, um, and with Phi, we can we can install. Ubuntu, Debian, and other things. What I now do is I start a virtual machine and boot this CD. And you will see a simple grub menu. And then we select the client installation. And it asks for a user and a password, but this, this is only because uh, it will wipe the whole disk, so after you enter the password install, you could not blame me to say, oh, my disk was wiped. So Fi is booting up, and then we have a nice menu where we can select what we want to install. Uh, my first Fi installation, the first thing is just a very simple Debian system without any uh, graphical user interface. You can select the XFCE or the GNOME desktop. You can also install CentOS 7 or Ubuntu. On this CD, we have all packages that are needed for the XFCE and the GNOME installation. So if we want to install CentOS or Ubuntu, it will need network access to get the packages from the network. But for GNOME and XFCE, we have all packages on the ISO image. Uh, we have a short description at the bottom um, what this will do, a fancy XFCE desktop, and then and there will be an account created. Then I just have to enter it and say go on, and then you see the normal Phi installation. Uh, first, the, um, the disk will be partitioned, and uh, then the packages will get installed. And then I, I do not have to do anything. The rest is just working fully automatically. Um, Phi also supports network-based installations. And if you want to set up the Phi server for the network installation, you only have to use two commands for creating this ISO image. So this is very nice to have the same process for the network installation, for CD installation, uh, you can use it for bare metal, for virtual machines, for setting up change root environments. Yeah, it's always the same process with the same features. And that's what I want to show you. And it's also very quick if you have a fast machine. And this virtual machine has its disk in RAM. So that will be very fast. Maybe we are under 100 seconds to have the XFC desktop installed. Yeah, any questions so far while well, this is running? Why do you call it my first file install and not cloud in it or something really <laughs> fancy? Yeah, uh, I think I will call it cloud in it in the enterprise version where you have to buy licenses. <laughs> so, but in the community version, it's called my first file installation. The, is this using Padman for the partition? No, uh, FAI is not using the Debian installer at all. It can, it uses the preceding thing, but what we use is um, an NFS root thing. So uh, we, we made our change root environment. This is the running system during the installation. And there we wrote um, um, a script that reads some FS tab like configuration file and then executes the part at commands. So we are not using the UDEPs from inside the Debian installer. Uh, we also have, for example, ButterFS support or LVM RAID. So as you can see, oh, it took 150 seconds. Normally, it's like 105 seconds. Everything went fine. 
uh, I added a stop here. Normally, we could just say, okay, finished, reboot. So one more typing return. In reboot, goes back to the grub menu. And the, the main entry is boot now from the first partition of the disk. And when we do this, we get the normal um, grub entry. And then the machine starts. And you will see the desktop. I've created an account called demo with the password FAI. Seriously? Yeah, it's a demo. <laughs> it's an unsecured demo. And what I added in this configuration, normally I do not install GIMP by, by default, but in this configuration I added uh, the package GIMP, so it was also installed. And this, and I could redo this also with the GNOME desktop and it would do the same thing very fast. And for me, what's, what's very important that uh, you can use Phi for, for the different things. So for bare metal, for the virtual machines, the change root, CD or USB stick, as I said, only two commands and you create the bootable ISO uh, we can also, I've once created a live CD, so this is an installation CD, but you can also create a live CD with Phi. And currently I'm working on the enterprise version, uh, and that's really very easy because we, we have everything in Phi, so we can also create cloud images in maybe in a week or two. So that's it. Another question? Yeah, you mentioned the enterprise version. Can you elaborate on pricing and licensing and stuff like that? Oh, it's, it's very expensive. <laughs> yeah, a, a B or two. So, sort of this. Yeah, another question? How hard is it to customize? So, if I want to adjust to my own needs, can yeah, you show any, anything about the configuration files? Um, the configuration files. Uh, uh, these are all text files and they are divided in the dif different uh, um, in the different parts of the installation. So first we define some classes. We, we have like building blocks in Phi, so you can define a class web server or department A, department B. And um, then we have a subdirectory disk config as I said already. The disk config file is, is similar to an FS tab, so where, where you just describe, I want a primary or logical partition, the size of the partition you can define. What parts? What? What is parsing this and turning it to, into uh, parted commands? This is our own Perl script that is parsing this one. Yeah, that's, and it, it should be very easy for the user. So, um, and even the, the LVM, I think here's the LVM example. If you want to read an example, I think you could just write down your own configuration. And for selecting the packages, you just write the name of the packages into a text file, that's it. And in the end, the customization script, uh, we use mostly shell scripts, but you can also use your Puppet, CF Engine, or whatever configuration management script that you are using or are used to in. So it's very flexible. But yes, the, the most part is to do the customization script if you have very uh, elaborated uh, yeah, environments. Okay, that's it. One more question, no? Anybody? Okay, then up to the next one, thank you. Yeah, so the actual, the main presenter for the next live demo isn't here. He's in Korea. However, his glamorous assistant, Remna, um, will be helping and, you know, standing in for his presence. I'm just trying to fill time while he's setting up. Um, oh. oh, yeah, lightning talks. Everybody, well, you know. Within reason, everybody should submit lightning talks. Um, there is a session on Thursday. There is another live de demo session on Friday. Um, please send mail to islightningreal at debconf.org. Um, 
The address is also in the announced mails every day. Um, please do. I'd really like some lightning talks. You ready? Uh, almost. You know we it did is the, nearly che ready. the check and it was different before, but never mind. Okay, here we are. Wait, uh, I haven't announced you yet. The mic is over there. I guess. We know you can yell, but really. So, in a moment, as soon as he stops breaking the audio. Sorry. Yeah, I know you are. Um, we will have remotely Sean Witten and locally David Bremner talking about something. Something. Okay, so um, I guess some of you use Emacs. Um, I see, I think, anyway, yeah, you know who you are. Um, so there's this thing called Melpa, which is sort of like the Wild West, but it has lots of useful packages in it. 3,192 packages. Um, it's sort of the anti-Debian. They always package from Git master. They don't care about licenses, blah, 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 blah. So um, we wrote some tools. Uh, Sean and I, to make it easy to find my windows um, and bring these packages into Debian after passing through a human in the usual value-added way that makes Debian worthwhile. So um, Sean is going to walk me through how to use the tool that he wrote. So um, by giving me things to type on IRC, and I'm going to bravely type them into my computer, and this is going to be entertaining, if not educational. So. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, assuming Korea is still on the internet. Right. Well, I don't think Sean's the missile launching type. but. Okay, what could possibly go wrong? I think somebody already said that, so. Okay, it's a little hard to see here. Let me get rid of IRC, and we'll bring Sean back in a minute. Oh, I should split the window the other way. That would be smarter. Okay. Oh, that's probably nausea-inducing. Let me bring back IRC. All right, so now we have IRC up above and my blind following of Sean's commands down below. Okay, so I just cloned this repo uh, from GitHub, which is where most of this, uh, these projects live. Now Sean is in a minute going to tell me to change into the directory that I just... Uh, ha -ha. Hey. Space and time. <laughs> It's a timey-wimey thing, as Doctor Who would say. I'm 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 done, Sean. Ah, <laughs> uh, the the IRC has a lot of lag. Okay, that's confusing. I don't know how botnets manage this. I can barely control one computer. Okay, so we're just messing about a bit because this repo uh, is slightly messed up. Can you like tell Elaine and me Brad, like show what you're doing, or is it blind? Completely blind. Okay, so so um, Sean, for whatever reason, wants me to make a master branch based on the tag 4.0, and that this is his plan for accomplishing that. I mean, there's probably other ways to do the same thing. Why don't you just type a dot on IRC once again? Because that would be enough. Ah, oh, right, okay. Because the stream is delayed. <laughs> so, great, best laid plans. I told you this was going to be entertaining. Oh. All right, so now he's answering your question. Which, luckily, he's answering the same way I did, so, <laughs> so that we're not contradicting each other. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> A, even sorrier. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I know what he's going to tell me next. 
but. Are there species to kill? <laughs> okay, so this is the interesting part. Um, so we're going to invoke this tool. Who's used DH make Perl? One, <laughs> Nico, thanks. Okay, Walter, thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, this is, if you think Perl and Emacs are both scary, horrible things, this is the tool for you because it's a repurposing of the Perl tool to package Emacs things. So, I mean, Sean did a bunch of work, but he started with DHMake Perl, so. All right, so probably easier. So, and it has a, an option which uh, says use the options most suitable for the, for the Emacs team. Oh, see, now he's getting ahead of me. I'm talking too much. All right, so that didn't give too much output except to say, dude, you're a Debian maintainer. You should actually look at the output of this tool. All right, we're going to have to pick up the pace here. Less comedy, more action. Okay, so I just committed the, blindly committed the uh, output of the tool, which is of course a terrible idea. Um, yeah, okay, I hope we don't run out of time here. Because he has this whole quilt idea. Oh, the, the tension is killing me here. I'm tempted to cheat. All right, so the point is, is that upstream screwed up, uh, as upstream does. Um, okay, so he says edit, edit by hand. What, using what, an editor? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot that Emacs does that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, where, though? <laughs> All right, I could use said from within Emacs. Yeah, that would be funny. All right, is there any other? So there's sounds like just the one, but let's be sure. Ah, uh, I missed the important one, of course. Upstream, you're making me look bad. Okay. Um, yes, okay. So I, I, I think I got it. Uh, not yet. That's a good point. Okay, so then um, where's my shell? We've moved it. All right, so um, what was my? This you is probably. There you go. Uh, <coughs> Depackage source. Depackage source minus minus commit. Commit. I have no tarball. Help me out here, guys. Um, what, maybe I can just um, build it anyway. OK, so um, that more or less worked. Um, and the thing that Sean wanted me to point out is that We've built infrastructure to make sure it runs the test suite. So uh, yay, running test suites. And this is so if you use these tools, it's always run, build, running the upstream test suite, or it does its best anyway. So um, we built a package. And I'm not going to type sudo inside Emacs. Sorry. There's only so much trust in the world. So I'm installing the, 
<laughs> the package that I just uh, made, if I can remember my root password. So all of you shoulder surfing on the uh, stream, help me out. Okay, so um, can I have zero, 30 seconds? Yeah. Uh, right, so, um, so one of the things about the packaging tools is that you don't have to edit your .emacs or anything. So now I can... Um, if I could remember the command, let's go back to the other screen. What am I running? Help. A V Y. Oh yeah, right. Thanks. A V Y. Uh, go to character. Character L. Okay, so I don't actually know how to use this package, but you can see that it was doing something. Right. So, um, all right, we went from git clone to running the package in 10 minutes, and I could show you the packaging is not too awful. Um, so, I'll stop. Thank you all very much. Uh, yeah, any questions? I guess we've got time. So, anybody? On IRC from Sean? <laughs> Don't ask me anything hard. <laughs> okay, sorry, comment to the speaker. Do I need to read the slides? I think that must be for Thomas. Yeah, I don't even know what a desktop background is. <laughs> <laughs> Any answers? Uh, sure, it's possible to change the desktop background, but um, I, I think I, I don't know how to change it because I do not use a desktop on my machine. I, I, I guess there's some GNOME config command that you have to execute and then give it the, the new image that it will put on it. And, but, but normally you would do this command inside the customization script of Phi. So if you know how to change the background in GNOME, you can put this command in the script and it will be executed during the installation. But please ask the GNOME people how to change the background. In summary, can you just summarize what you've done? Sure. Uh, and how you got from the, the Git repository to the, the package? Sure. Um, so uh, the first step, actually, which was invisible, was we wrote some dev helper extensions. Um, so there's an extension called DHELPA, uh, which basically does all the build time stuff that we need to make it easy to package Emacs packages. Is that the, where there is a package? Oh. Yes. So that's in, in testing by now, and uh, will be backported soon. Um, the tool that I demonstrated today um, generates a skeleton Debian package that uses, uses this helper tool. Um, so I don't want to minimize that, but both, both pieces are important. Thank you very much. Um, reminder to those just tuning in now, live demos Friday. Um, those are, there are currently four slots available, 10 minutes each. Uh, lightning talks Thursday, there are seven slots remaining of five minutes each. Um, please do write to me and yeah, see you then, bye.